A kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I'm a producer for podcasts here at a kids company about. We're on a mission to empower a generation of kids through diverse storytelling, and we're doing this through podcasts like the one you're listening to right now. Check out all our books, podcasts, and classes by visiting akidsco.com. Hi, welcome to 1.5, a kids podcast about climate justice. I'm Olivia Greenspan. And I'm Zanaji Artis. And we believe that kids like you deserve a livable future. A livable future. This means a future where no one will have to worry if our planet is healthy enough for humans to live safe and happy lives. That's Joanna. She's our on-hand dictionary if we ever come to a word or phrase you might not know or understand already. In our show, 1.5, we are going to explore the challenges facing our planet with all different kinds of people, with scientists, with youth activists, and other environmental leaders who have actually experienced the realities of the climate crisis firsthand. But since today is our first episode, we thought we'd start this podcast series by sharing who we are as the hosts of 1.5, why the show is called 1.5, and give you a roadmap of what you can expect to hear this season. So you both are wondering why our show is called 1.5. I swear people keep asking me this. Have you gotten this question a lot? I have 1.5. What's up with that? Yeah, for real. Adults, kids, everyone's been asking. Yes, the people want to know. Well, <laughs> we we named the show 1.5 as a reference to a really important goal in the fight against climate change. Climate change refers to average long-term temperature and other changes over the entire Earth. You can think of climate change like our planet being sick and needing treatment to get better. Thanks, Joanna. Like I was saying... Our show's name, 1.5, refers to a really important goal in the fight against climate change. Since you're listening to the show, you might already be familiar with climate change and its impacts on the Earth, but some of you may not be familiar with climate change yet, and that's okay. Basically, climate change is a current thing happening to our planet, where basically our entire planet, on average, is warming up. That's right, Olivia. And if you've ever had a fever, you can think about climate change like a fever happening to the Earth. So our own bodies stay at around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit to keep us healthy and happy. But climate change, that's not good for the Earth because that changes Earth's temperature, just like getting a fever changes your temperature. Yeah. When I heard this this concept of climate change is like the Earth getting a fever... I didn't hear it until I was an adult. And suddenly, even though I already knew about climate change, it made so much more sense to me because it's so clear, right? If you've ever had a fever, usually you're around 98.6. And even if you go up a tiny bit, you feel so different. Even if you go up half a degree, you feel sick, you might have to stay home from school. And every degree that your temperature goes up, if you've had a 99 degree fever, 100, 102, up to maybe 104, and you feel really sick, um, there's a big difference in how you feel. And it's kind of the same with Earth. Um, every degree that our Earth is rising in temperature, uh, the sicker our planet's getting and the more it's going to take for the Earth to get better. Exactly. And like our bodies, the planet is really good at keeping the temperatures at average. And like our bodies, we're, we're always at that that regular 98.6. But this climate change thing for the Earth, it's really throwing things out of whack. <laughs> so um, that's why it's warming. And for every fraction of a degree that the Earth warms up, there's a huge impact on our planet and all the people, the plants, and the animals who live here. And right now, our best estimate is that our planet has warmed a little over one degree Celsius. The most recent best estimate is 1.08 degrees Celsius. So we said we'd explain why our show is called 1.5. And this is the reason. 1.5 degrees is the amount that we have to limit Earth's warming to, to prevent the worst impacts of climate change. 
And we're going to explain what those impacts of climate change are throughout this, the series. But all you need to know right now is that the Earth has warmed about one degree, and we're close to that that goal of 1.5 degrees, which means that we need to do as much as we can now to help the Earth get better and and heal its fever, if you will. Hmm. Yes. The light bulb, 1.5. Wow. We are getting somewhere, people. So our show is called 1.5, again, in reference to that goal of keeping warming at or below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Some of you may have heard of something called the Paris Climate Accord. Uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius is the goal that scientists and governments around the world have agreed upon to avoid the worst impacts of climate change and give humanity, our global community, the best chance we have to to prosper on our one and only planet. Exactly. But enough about numbers. <laughs> We're going to jump in more to talk a bit about ourselves. So now that we know why the show is called 1.5, why don't we share a little bit about ourselves. Sanaji, do you want to start? Absolutely. Hello, listener. It's so great to meet you. And to start, uh, I am from Connecticut, just like Olivia, in the United States. And we met because we're, we were both pursuing environmentally related projects. And now we're working together on 1.5. Yes. Um, and Sanaji, I don't know if you remember, we also wrote a book together. Uh, called A Kid's Book About Climate Change. It was a great, (laughs) great time. We sure did. We sure did. Yes, we wrote A Kid's Book About Climate Change to provide a resource that Olivia and I didn't have when we were kids. And we really wanted to write this book because it explains climate change in a simple, easy to understand way. We talk about how the planet is warming, why it's like a fever for your own body, and also what some of the solutions are to fix this problem that we face. Yeah, I had such a a great time writing that book with you. And um, it's been so cool to see kids and parents uh, read the book and share their feedback. And I'm so excited to be doing this podcast with you, Sanaji, because we just get to dive so much um, and so much more depth into, into the topics we introduced in that book. Because as you'll see, you know, climate change is a really complex topic and it helps to have really simple plain language so that you can have a really good foundation for understanding what's happening to our planet so that we can fix this problem anyway we were introducing ourselves Sanaji beyond being co-author of a kid's book about climate change and being a great friend uh, who are you I'm Zanaji Artist. I use he, him pronouns. I am 21 years old. I'm an author, climate activist, and also a founder and the executive director of the global youth-led climate justice organization, Zero Hour. I love Zero Hour. I'm Zero Hour's number one fan. Uh, I stand zero hour. Um, Can you tell us a little bit more about the work that you guys do? Absolutely. So... Basically, what you need to know about Zero Hour is that we are a group of young people in the U.S. and all over the world leading a movement for change to take action on climate change. So we've hosted rallies, we've marched in the streets, we've talked to elected officials, and we are demanding climate justice for all because as young people, climate change is an issue that is affecting us right now, and it's going to affect our futures if we don't take action right now. So would it be right to say that, do you remember a couple of years ago when all those young people were in the streets, like millions of young people around the world marching for climate justice? You remember that, right? Sure do. I was there. <laughs> I was there too. Um, would it be right to say the Zero Hour helped organize those marches? Yes. So Zero Hour led the youth climate marches here in the U.S. and in 25 locations all around the world in 2018. And then we also helped again uh, for the global climate strikes in 2018, where people were taking to the streets, telling their stories and talking about climate change as an issue that people should care about. Awesome. That's so cool. It was so, uh, I'll never forget that feeling of of being with so many young people um, who all care about this issue of climate change. It was so special. Is there, is there anything else you want to share about yourself, Samashi? 
Oh, let's see. What did I forget? Well, climate justice. So I mentioned that Zero Hour is a, it's a movement for climate justice. And since this word is also in the subtitle of our show, 1.5, a kid's podcast about climate justice, let's have Joanna help us out. Climate justice is a term used to frame climate change as an ethical and political issue rather than one that is purely environmental or physical in nature. This is done by relating the causes and effects of climate change to concepts of justice. Thanks, Joanna. Yes, basically when I say Zero Hour organizes to demand climate justice for all, what I'm saying is that we're focusing on addressing the ways climate change impacts people who live on Earth in different ways. Climate justice is a really special term and one that I learned also as an adult. But the way I think about it is... When you talk about climate justice, you're not you're not only talking about what climate change is. So you're not only talking about the fact that the earth is warming up, that it has these impacts on the earth, but you're basically also talking about how it affects people around the world in all different kinds of ways because everyone has different backgrounds, um, which means that we'll need to pursue different solutions to make sure that all these different kinds of people around the world are taken care of. Yeah. Definitely. And there are so many different solutions that we're going to hear about uh, from lots of different people. So we're excited about that. And also, you can check them out in our book, (laughs) Kids Book About Climate Change. You sure can. And we will also have show notes where we share a few more resources for after every episode. Uh, Okay, so so Sanaji, I'm hearing that you're you're from Connecticut. You're uh, one of the founders of Zero Hour. Um, you're doing incredible work in the climate justice movement. Is there anything else about yourself that you want to share? Sure. Like I said, I grew up on the shoreline of Connecticut. I love spending time outside, love the water, the beach. I am also a student right now. I'm a senior at Brown University studying political science and environmental studies. And I don't really know what I want to do with my life after graduating, but I am definitely in love with the environment and love working on issues of climate change and policy. Well, listen, if there's one thing I know about you, it's that you actually are one of the people who like truly loves the environment more than anyone I know. (laughs) Like you really just, you love nature and you love plants and you love the animals and you love to show me pictures that you take of the animals, which I love to see. What can I say? I'm a tree hugger. (laughs) But thank you. Yes. And so let's talk about you. Tell us about yourself. Um, Okay. Well, uh, I use she, her pronouns. And I graduated from college a couple of years ago. I studied these topics called economics and psychology. And after graduation, I worked on a few entrepreneurship projects. I also was on a fellowship with Cliff Bar for a year. So if you've ever had a Cliff Bar, shout out Cliff Bar, you guys are the best. Um, They helped me with some of my climate justice work. And actually a kid's book about climate change would not exist if not for Cliff Bar. So thank you, Cliff Bar. And um, other than that, I volunteered for climate justice organizations. And in general, if you know me, you know that in basically every single area of my life, I use all the tools at my disposal to combat climate change. And I think you have lots of tools at your disposal. So I'm wondering if you could talk a bit about those and everything that you've learned. Yeah, it's another one of my best slash worst qualities, (laughs) depending on who you talk to. Um, I I don't stop talking about the new things I'm learning every single day. But uh, something I learned recently, which really honestly blew my mind, is that Talking about climate change um, and spreading information is is one of the most impactful things we can do. Um, I used to not I used to not really understand that the importance of of just speaking about things, but it turns out that research actually demonstrates that not shutting up about climate change is one of the best ways to fight climate change at this uh, point. And another really thing, cool thing that I learned recently which again, I just, I really didn't know is really the opposite of what I thought is that far fewer people in the U.S. deny that climate change is happening and a serious issue. So actually, uh, most people in the United States where we live believe that climate change is real 
and that climate action is needed. I'm going to repeat that (laughs) because we don't hear it enough. Most people in the U.S. believe that climate change is real and that climate action is needed. Well, that's a relief um, because we do need most people to care about this and we need people to talk about it. And if you haven't gathered this already, we're going to be talking about this a lot, (laughs) Uh, talking about climate change, why it's important and why we need as many people as possible talking about how much they care about our planet and how they can use their own skills and perspectives in this climate justice movement. And so... We're excited and we're excited to be on this journey and help build another community of people who care about preventing the worst impacts of climate change and taking action for climate justice. Yes. And you know, it's so cool. You, you listening right now are actually now part of this awesome group of people who care about climate change and want to use everything at their disposal to help. Yes, and that is that is cool to the maximum, 110% cool. <laughs> but more about what you can expect here this season on 1.5 when we return after this quick break. Hi, my name is Jonah and I want to tell you about a kid's class about... An all new streaming platform for kids and teens. I took the class on discovering your passion with teacher Kevin Carroll, and it was amazing and inspiring. I can't wait to check out more classes. There are even classes focused on careers, classes on life skills, and classes on big ideas. And if you're a kid or a teen, I think you're going to love them. Visit akidsco.com and sign up for a free 14 day trial. Hi, I'm Nikita Simpson. And I'm Dr. Lockhart. I wrote a kid's book called A Kid's Book About Emotions. And I help kids and grown-ups work through their emotions. This is Everyday Feels, a podcast about emotions for kids and their grown-ups. I think it's so great when you have a person that you trust in your life, that you feel open and able to share everything that's going on inside of you. I agree, Nikita, because I think it takes so much confidence and bravery in sharing our stories and being vulnerable because we're trying to normalize talking about feelings and emotions. That means that we all have them and it's okay to talk about them because we all feel them. And you're always allowed to feel what you feel. Let's continue this journey together. This is Everyday Feels, a podcast about emotions for kids and their grownups. Okay, listeners, welcome back to 1.5, a kid's podcast about climate justice. So now Zanaj and I are going to shift gears and we're going to lay out a roadmap about what you can expect to hear this season on 1.5. This season will be split into three parts. What is climate change, intersectionality, and solutions? And to get the most out of this season of 1.5, we recommend listening to the episodes in order so that we continue building on new knowledge from every episode. So part one, what is climate change? We'll focus on, well, (laughs) what climate change is and why the climate is changing. And since this is 1.5, a kid's podcast about climate justice, we'll also dive a bit into how climate change affects young people and what we can do about it. Exactly. And once you're all climate change experts, after listening to part one, part two will focus on intersectionality. Another new word, intersectionality. Joanna, can you help us out for anyone who might not be familiar with this term? Sure thing, Olivia. Intersectionality can be thought of as a way to think about an issue in a broader social context. For instance, an issue that affects black people and another issue that affects women both affect black women. For the purpose of our show, thinking about intersectionality basically means thinking about all the ways climate justice is relevant for different kinds of people. Black people, low-income people, women, the list goes on. Every identity that we have, climate change can affect us in different ways. And so it's important to think about that with climate justice. 
Right. And you can you can think about yourself. You know, what are some some words that you use to describe yourself? You might use like ones we've mentioned, women, low income, black, indigenous. You know, we all have different identities. And I'm sure, you know, being in the world, you know how how those identities interact with the world. And intersectionality basically just means a way of thinking about how climate change affects all different kinds of people with different identities all over the world in different ways. I'm sure you know that climate change affects us all differently because we all have different life experiences and come from different backgrounds. So it's important to think about intersectionality when we think about climate change, um, because like we said in the beginning, climate justice means not just thinking about what climate change is, it means thinking about how climate change affects people who live on this planet that we all share. Exactly. And so part two will give you an introduction to climate change under this intersectional lens. And we're going to be talking with lots of our friends um, who have very different experiences, very different identities, who have experienced climate injustice and also talk about what they're doing about it, how they're taking action, how they're sharing their own stories, and also what you can do about it. Yes. So we're actually speaking from the future right now because we we spoke to those friends already. And I had such a fun time speaking to Kevin and Jerome and Jamie, actual friends that we have in real life who were so so generous to come on our show and share their share their experiences with us. Um, I'm so excited for for part two. Yes, me too. And now we're going to move on to part three solutions. Yes, <laughs> um, I said this last time. Uh, I'm also very excited for part part three uh, solutions. Um, can you tell us what what we'll expect to hear in part three? We're all excited. We're 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 so on the edge of our seats. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about part three. So part three will be all about solutions to the climate crisis. We'll hear from experts split into four solution themes, water, air, earth, and fire. Yes. You know, another thing that I've I've learned working in in the climate movement is that it's so important to, um, it is really important to understand how climate change works and why it's a big problem. But it's equally, if not more important, to talk about all of the incredible solutions that both exist today and that we could see in the future to kick this climate crisis to the curb. And so I really am excited to speak to all of our friends in part three and hear about the vast range of solutions that can help heal our planet. Yes, me too. And maybe some of these solutions, you, listener, you could bring into the world. And so we're going to be hearing from people about what you can do in your own life, in your own home to take action and actually help solve the climate crisis with us. Yeah. One of the things, I don't know if you feel this way, Sanaji, but one of the things I think is so cool about the climate justice movement is that so often as kids, kids are asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it's not until they're adults that they start you know, that we start actually doing stuff in the real world. But because the climate crisis is so urgent, when we say solutions you listener could bring into the world, we don't mean when you grow up, we mean today, because there are kids all over the world, like Zanaji, when he was a teen, (laughs) actually bringing climate solutions into the world. So I want you to keep that in the front of your mind, that you are so much more powerful than than anyone could imagine. Yeah, for sure. Back in my day, just <laughs> just four years ago, I didn't know anything about climate justice or taking action on climate change. So you have it in you. You have the potential. We're so excited for this journey. And so from part one on what climate change is to part two on an intersectionality, finally to part three on solutions... We are so excited for you to join us on this journey and become a change maker with us. Thank you. 
Thank you, listeners, for joining us today. 1.5 is written by me, Zanaji Artis. And me, Olivia Greenspan. With occasional support from me, Joanna, from naturalreaders.com. Our show is edited and produced by Matthew Winner with help from Ari Maffei and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory. And this show was brought to you by a kid's podcast about... This show is inspired by our book, a kid's book about climate change and the millions of young people around the world fighting for their right to a livable future. You can write to us at listen at a kid's podcast about dot com and check out other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting a kid's dot com. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at a kid's company about. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at a kid's podcast about. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Akidsco.com.